When we're building with wood and definitely when we're building with metal, it's not too hard to know that what we're building is going to be strong enough to do the job. But when we're building with plastics, I can't say that I have the same level of confidence. Most of the tests that I've seen performed are on incredibly small parts and that's not actually that easy to understand how to apply them to the real world. So in this video, we're going to continue to test closer to real world size 3D prints with and without connections and then we'll twist the heck out of them to see how much force they can take using this digital torque readout. I'm also going to add in some common building materials so we have an even better benchmark. So stick around. If you're enjoying these kind of videos and you aren't already subscribed, I'd love to have you join. I have one new and original video every single week and I do everything right here myself. This channel is also getting even closer to that 100,000 subscriber goal by 2025, which makes this channel far more sustainable. So thank you to everyone for that. I also try and read every single comment and I try and respond to as many comments as I can. So lots of your ideas from the comment section end up making it into future videos as well. I bought this digital torque readout. This one goes up to 150 foot pounds or 203 newton meters of torque. I can't imagine a 3D print taking anywhere close to that type of force and actually surviving. Hopefully this one can do the job. And what I can do is attach my largest socket to it. And then I have this breaker bar as well. And then I have this 3D printed solid glass fiber reinforced ABS piece, which inserts right inside that socket like so. And then our rail can go in there and everything is an extremely tight, snug fit. I think this is gonna work pretty well for a test. And when it comes to testing the connections themselves, I need to have the connection twist and as little twist occurring in the rail itself. So these parts are gonna end up being pretty short. And I'm going to be doing tests outside today because with even better lighting, I can use a higher frame rate and hopefully we'll be able to capture the moment the failures occur even better. Here are the contestants for today. These are the continuous parts. And here are the connections that we'll be testing. I have OSB oriented strand board. I have some fairly lightweight plywood. We have solid spruce with a knot. And then we have soft maple. And like the last video, a continuous 3D printed part. For the connections, we have the sine wave. It performed really well in the previous test video. I've made a slight modification thanks to all of the comments and some emails as well. I've added the heat set inserts in from the outside and hopefully this connection can reach its full potential. We have the undersquinted stops blade scarf joint. We have the screw lap connection. We have the echo lock. And then the sliding tapered dovetail connection. And lastly, which came in last place in the previous video, we have the drop lock. Let's go ahead and get these set up in our test rig. This is our test setup. I have a big vise clamped to an old drill press stand and it should be plenty strong enough to do the job. And what I have here is another glass fiber reinforced piece. This one is intended to clamp around the pieces so that they are supported really around the full perimeter rather than just on the two sides. So hopefully that does do the job. Again, 100% infill on this one. So this is an incredibly heavy piece and it is extremely stiff. Let's go ahead and get our first test piece loaded in. First test piece, OSB. Let's see how this one performs. Next piece is plywood.
Next test, we have solid spruce. Next up for the wood products, we have the solid maple. I'm having some technical difficulties here. Let me see what's going on. Okay, so what I decided to do, uh, since this seems to be tapping out a bit early, is I'm gonna go right for the socket instead, socket and breaker bar. Well, it is broken, it's fractured, and it's still quite together and it's got that twist stuck in it. It's still extremely stiff. Next up, we have our 3D printed continuous piece. actually pretty impressive. I was not expecting it to do that well. Next up we have the drop lock. Next up, we have the sliding tapered dovetail. We have the echo lock. Next up, we have the screw lab connection. And now we're getting to the top contenders. This is the undersquinted stop splayed scarf joint. It is one of two of the last connections. This is the last connection. This is the sine wave, and it was one of the best, one of the two best performers in the last video. So I have high hopes for this one. And with those little modifications that you guys suggested, maybe it'll do even better on this one. So here are the results. We have OSB coming in at the very bottom, so far down that I could barely even get a reading on this. So OSB may be good as a sheathing material. It isn't particularly good as far as a structural component like a rail, for example. Next up, we have this plywood. And again, this is pretty lightweight plywood. So I didn't expect the performance was gonna be great, but I wanted to choose this because it has essentially layer lines, just like a 3D print does. And it came in at 11 Newton meters, not really that good at all. And now this one surprised me a little bit. The continuous 3D print came in at 30.6 Newton meters. It performed really well. 
It has somewhat of a spiral fracture. There's a little bit of fracturing on the layer lines as well, especially on this side. But overall performance, 30.6 Newton meters, it's not too far away from the spruce. And speaking of spruce, 41.4 Newton meters. And I should point this out, 42 grams for the spruce and 50 grams for the 3D print. So the spruce is definitely lighter weight and quite a bit above the rest of the samples, we have the solid maple. And what I thought I was hearing during the test was the meter breaking or the meter telling me that I was at the right torque setting. That wasn't actually the case. It was the material making that noise and it completely threw me off. Luckily, it had already fractured in a few places, so the torque couldn't have gone higher than what it was originally during that first part of the test. And we can compare that to the connections that we have here, and we have worst performer all the way up to best performer in the torque test. Here we have a sliding dovetail at 12.1 Newton meters, 15.1 for the under squinted stops blade scarf joint, 16.3 for the screw lap, 18.3 for the drop lock, 18.6 Newton meters for the sine wave and 19.7 for the echo lock. The echo lock came in third place on the last set of testing and here it has come in first place and by a fair lead as well, 19.7 Newton meters and the next closest was 18.6. Now these samples didn't come anywhere close to a full solid wood piece of wood, but when you compare them to a continuous 3D print at 30.6 Newton meters, they really aren't that far off. At least some of them aren't that far off. You can, if you compare them to the OSB, they perform quite a bit better. So I've taken the rankings from the previous video and I have taken the rankings from this video. And here is the top to the bottom as far as how they rank overall. Sine wave came in first. Echo lock came in second. Under squinted, stop blade, scarf joint, the screw lap connection, then the drop lock, and then the sliding dovetail. The sliding dovetail performed especially poor in this set of testing. It really didn't do that well when twisted apart. So there may be other connections as well. I'm interested to hear from you guys if you think I should try out some other connections, but I'd also like to focus on improving some of these connections as well. I think there's a lot more potential in these and I think we can achieve even better results. I also have a lot more ideas for testing videos, so if you like this type of stuff, definitely let me know in the comments and I will keep them coming. Now I think there's something worth mentioning and probably worth testing in maybe a follow-up video, and that is looking at each of these parts. The red section seems to have failed far, far more than the gray section did. Now these are the exact same manufacturer. They are dried as similar as I can dry them, but seems as though the red is quite a bit weaker. Now I should have mentioned this earlier, but these are 25 millimeters tall by 20 millimeters thick, 0.2 millimeter layer height, six walls, 12 tops, 12 bottoms, 30% gyroid infill. And if you're interested in this stuff, I will have some links down there below as well. So the sine wave is the overall number one and the one to beat. Now there is one more test that we can perform and that one is a tension test on these connections. So let me know if you're interested in seeing that test as well. Thank you to each of my patrons for helping to support this channel and making these videos possible. And if you wanna support this channel as well, there is a link down there below. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Take care and we'll see you on the next one.